Okay, we're back live here at uh, OpenStack Summit. Get the headphones here. <laughs> okay, trying to hold it together. I was just uh, ty typing a note. Uh, this is the exclusive coverage of SiliconANGLE.com here at the OpenStack Summit. And uh, it's been a really tough day today. Obviously, we saw the news about the Boston tragedy. Um, and this, we're wrapping up day one. And it's really kind of hit us hard here. Jeff Frick and I both were talking off camera. We have, I have family there. and the marathon many times in that spot, I know exactly where it is. Um, and it really is a tragedy and it's, it's been taking its toll on us all day today. We try to do our best to keep our chin up and get you some great coverage here from the OpenStack Summit. Uh, Jeff, real tragedy in Boston. Um, you know, just, it's really horrible. The horrific videos, the chaos uh, that ensued, just reports of eight-year-old boy dead. It's kind of affected us, it affected me here in theCUBE today. Um, and uh, really, yeah. really want to send out my, my prayers to the families and the people involved, and the toll's rising, the injured are rising. Pretty horrific. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really too bad, and, and uh, what we're doing here is exciting, and tech is exciting, and, 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 and that's all fine and good, but um, there's a horrible thing that happened, and you know, people are getting killed and hurt, and, and uh, for whomever did it, obviously, is, is yeah. bad, bad news, so our thoughts go out and, and, and hopefully uh, you've been able to get in contact with your friends and loved ones and, and hopefully they're okay. Like New York City, obviously a smaller scale than say the World Trade Center, but you know, terrorist attacks like this are brutal and I know Boston's a tight town. There'll be some angry people and a lot of anger there, but you know what, they're going to come together. Boston's a great town and I'm, I'm really you know, heartfelt by it. Um, but here, we're going to keep, uh, we're going to, we're going to follow through, stay, st finish strong here at theCUBE, day one of three days of coverage exclusively at the OpenStack Summit. I want to thank the OpenStack Foundation for letting us come here. They picked up the, the cost for the connectivity, which allows us to broadcast all the signal from the noise here. Not a lot of noise, a lot of signal uh, from the OpenStack Summit. I want to also thank Service Mesh. Go to that company, check them out. Really like this company. They stepped up, they supported us, um, they sponsored us here. They're also going to sponsor us, uh, also going to the Amazon events as well, AWS Summit and AWS Invent. If you're interested in sponsoring theCUBE and want to underwrite, help us get more signal, get more resources to get on the ground coverage, um, always contact us. We're always looking really to get that underwriting to help us bring the independent coverage of these events where no one else is covering it. And uh, that's, that's what we want to do. We go where the action is, Jeff, and the action here is OpenStack Summit because of the, of the inflection point. We heard from our guests today from uh, startups, entrepreneurs, to folks on the OpenStack Foundation that you know, this is an inflection point. You're seeing the maturization of the cloud, no longer about the hypervisors and the technology on the bare metal of the servers. Bigger picture, it's about corporate enterprises, it's about service providers. It's about a new modern infrastructure and a new mindset. DevOps, scale out commodity industry standard servers and storage with software being the key. Linux, virtualization, a lot of technology and a lot of innovation. Yeah, and I, I think it rolls up a lot of technology trends that are happening right now. Uh, first off, just the whole developers are king again. And, and the fact that they were enabled by an AWS to spin up an environment for very low cost and very little time to take their projects forward and how that um, has fundamentally transformed the way that large companies have had to work now to support that type of, of development effort. And clearly mobile has a lot to do with that because there are a lot of cool little apps that people, to get, uh, people put together to get after the mobile platform. I think it's amazing that you see this synergy between open source and commercial enterprises, and you know, using really open source as a as a as a fuel for innovation. But obviously, when it gets into the enterprise, they want uh, people to to put it in. They want people to support it. They need training. They need kind of all the the enterprisey things that go around it. So that's synergy. The fact that we've got really large companies, as you said, the biggest whales of the whales are here, and they're excited about OpenStack. And at the same time, we had Alessandro here, who off camera when he left, I you know, he's going crazy. He's so excited. I said. How many people do you have in your company? He says 10. He's 10. He, yeah. He's going to grow to 50 by the end of next year. So the fact that, and I've been in an HP, and Alessandro with his 10 guys who's working on big Microsoft projects are so excited at the same time. I yeah. think it's, it's pretty mean, it's interesting. It, Jeff, it's you hit the nail on the head. What's really happening here is massive growth. And you know, to me, the macro big picture in the marketplace is that the investment coming into the sector for cloud-related investments, IT investments, in specifically, is, a, is, a, is, is now on top of a generation of anemic investment, where over the past 10, 15 years, you talk to anyone at IT, uh, outside of the, obviously the emerging areas like financial services and some uh, specific uh, industries, has been cutting, 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 do more with less, cut to the bone, and now, all of a sudden, 
the tsunami of investments happening in that space is just overwhelming. It's affecting one, personnel decision making, how they're hiring, um, vendor relationships, suppliers, and all the different constituencies that take place for IT. And, and it's all about speed. The speed, speed game is, can I get applications out fast enough? This is a transformation because the stakes are high. Okay, the stakes are high because it's a competitive advantage. Applications are now being written specifically for business value. That top line revenue driving IT environment is here. And that has been the holy grail that everyone's been chasing for the past two decades, making IT drive revenue. Not just in niche, you know, obvious verticals, all verticals. So to me, very compelling. Obviously the whales are voting with their, with their actions and their commitments with code. Uh, IBM, HP, <laughs> VMware, uh, you name it, up and down. NetApp was on today, amazing story that those guys instantly are positioned perfectly for this market. Their little filer, their NetApp systems, actually are well positioned as an ingredient in the overall equation for, for this new model. So the economics are one picture, but it's really the wealth creation where a startup of 10 can compete with the big guys. Yeah. And to me, that's the exciting story. And the other part I think is fun with Diane, who, who, who's our, you know, our, our tech, our tech uh, developer goddess, and, and you know, she said, and you could see it in her voice, and, and you could see it in her expression, she's excited about developing again, because basically the inhibitors have been removed that makes it easier for, de for developers to build cool things and, and to deliver value. And then you compare that with Sean that came on from Service Mesh, and I, I found this company, he's already talking about kind of the next order. I mean, we have private clouds and we have public clouds and we've got AWS clouds and we've got on-prem and off-prem private clouds and now he's already talking about another generation where based on your project and the parameters of your project and the authorization of your project and the secrecy of the data, you'll just get a, the cloud and then behind the scenes, it'll provision it to one of these different cloud options that's the best fit. So, I mean, the, the pace of innovation is, is yeah. bananas. Sean and Douglas is a rock star, I'll tell you that right now, he's on the queue and, and, and I've been following his career at EMC and uh, him going to Service Mesh puts Service Mesh on the, on the uh, agenda for me because I started looking at, so they're one of the hottest companies out there that is not being fully recognized in the mainstream because they're working on stuff that's ahead of the curve. They're looking around the corner for the next big curve and you, you, you don't want to drive 90 miles an hour around that next curve. Service Mesh is doing things like hybrid cloud for the enterprise, software-defined data center, converged devices, cloud brokering, DevOps, and they understand the competitive landscape. And it, this is not like, you know, throw something up in the cloud, they're doing the real work. And, and to me, the passion that these guys have, yeah. like Service Mesh, like Piston Cloud, another great guest, Piston Cloud, uh, Josh was fantastic, laid out the 101 of, of OpenStack, nailed that question, um, and then just overall, yeah. there's real, real deal here. And what I think I'd share with the folks out there that you can't see, because you're not here in, 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 the, in the interviews is, the crowd here is not a hyped up crowd, right? These guys and gals are, they're, they're alpha geeks, they're uber geeks. What do you want to call them? They're, the, they're the, the, the thought leaders, they're making it happen. So although there's a little bit of grandstanding in the PR side of things with these companies, because they have PR departments, it's really a lot of meat on the bone. It's meat and potatoes. They're doing some solid work. And I think when OpenStack shifted from a marketing program to delivering code and reference implementations. You saw the credibility and they put governance around it. They did a good job. I got to have uh, props for the OpenStack Foundation, Rackspace, NASA, and the group of people that, that came together. So, yeah. you know, I got to say, this is a really good community. It's smoking hot and uh, I love it. Yeah, well I just, I just poked my head in the analyst briefing room and uh, one of the comments coming out of there and, it, and, and we heard it from Randy and, and Josh, you know, some of the pioneers of this thing is, is uh, as, a, as, a, as an open source project, the way that OpenStack has developed, really leveraging all of the learning from all the prior um, open source projects before, and the rate of development and maturity, um, and the governance that they put in place that, that's allowed for this innovation to happen so quickly is just phenomenal. I mean, you can't see, as John said, who's here, but you can see on the Twitter feed, the, everyone is just talking about there's not enough space in these rooms. There's not enough space in the rooms for people that are interested in learning, sharing information, and driving this thing forward. And it's a really exciting time. It's, I think they said it's the fifth, the fifth um, year, but I think as everyone said, and we have 3,000 people, it is really at a turning point um, and really set to run. The, the, the battle is done, 
they've won in terms of this uh, alternative, yeah, and, and they're gonna and they're gonna run. Some notable notable comments on the cube today. Obviously, Randy Bias was kind of really he trashed. Uh, Some of the fine data <laughs> was a, it was overhyped beyond uh, all recognition. Uh, food bar situation there. I I, don't, I disagree with him. I think. I know where he's getting cynic from, but um, you know, and I respect Randy a lot, and he's awesome. And Cloud Scaling is a company that's really that modern uh, provider. Um, but I do think it's a reality. I think S uh, Software Defined Data Center, or, or SDDC as they call it, the acronym, is a moonshot. It's it's a vision. No one has it yet. It's evolving. It's certainly not defined. This whole software defined is what we call software led, Jeff. It's not defined yet. So that's what's exciting. The infrastructure actually is being retooled on the fly while the app market up on top of the stack is exploding in growth. Right. So the, the, the combination of massive market opportunity growth, the, the, the tsunami of mobile development or edge of the network devices, internet of things, is forcing the infrastructure to, to, to retool. That's not how it used to work. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be infrastructure enables up top of the stack, not not in this market. Yeah, it's it's fun, and I'm I'm looking forward. I think we got a full slate of uh, of guests for tomorrow, so I'm looking I'm looking forward to that. Yep. So just some trending items here on, on our dashboard. Um, we're monitoring now 3,000 unique individuals on Twitter. Well, we have our, our our algorithmic tool. If you're interested in our V Finder product, we have the ability to, to track the communities. Obviously, OpenStack is, is number one. Um, cloud services. Uh, is, is number two, private cloud is number three, cloud infrastructure is number four, VMware is five, AWS, uh, cloud stack, which came up only once today, um, was an alternative to OpenStack, um, Diane brought it up, some are saying it's dead, OpenStack has won, that's a whole nother debate, HP storage made the dashboard, okay, um, and above that was network virtualization. These are the top trends, uh, and that's going on. The other vertical that we that we track is software-defined networking. And in that vertical, OpenStack is the number one trending item. So OpenStack really, in my opinion, made their bones from the work in the community, but it was the Nasira acquisition from VMware and the work in the v, in the network virtualization area, the network level, that pivoted OpenStack to being real. Hmm. And that's really a big deal. So tomorrow, we have we're going to have HP on, we're going to have Big Switch, Right Scale, Solid Fire, David Cahill from Solid Fire. We're going to have uh, Adrian on from a uh, uh, real, real hot company um, that's going to be announcing a big product um, tomorrow. We have Nuaj, HP again, Hortonworks. A lot of great Rack interviews. Space. We're here three days live. This is Silicon Angle and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Our mission in our fourth year now of The Cube is to go out to the events, go where the action is. If there's action in tech, emerging tech or enterprise tech, we want to be there. If there's an interview, we'll do it. If it means interviewing all day to extract the signal, we'll do that. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick, wrapping up day one coverage here at the OpenStack Summit. This is SiliconANGLE, and stay tuned for tomorrow, all day, wall-to-wall -wall coverage.